Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Acorn Hill. This is Louie and I wanted to give you an update today on the small potted bulbs that I did back in the fall. This is a fall planting project that I did, uh, which I plan on doing every year now, ever since I found out that bulbs could be planted and grown in smaller pots that we could collectively uh, arrange and place in different parts of the garden for a more impactful uh, display during the springtime. As I was putting together this planting project back in the fall, I figured I should build a smaller table where I could display them during the springtime. But time-wise, I uh, didn't and wasn't able to uh, do that project. And the next best spot and place that I could arrange them and place them together is on the elevated garden, right on the ledge of our retaining wall that holds uh, what I call the upper garden of our property. But before anything else, I'd like to invite you guys to consider subscribing and liking our videos. You can hit on the subscribe button on the screen and uh, just make sure that you also click on the bell button. That icon will tell you if there's any updates or anything, uh, notifications about different videos that I'm putting out on YouTube. Alrighty, so now that we got that out of the way, let us move on with our mini tour and mini update of this vignette that we put together for you. In this mini collection, I have put these bulbs in different types of pots, ceramic, terracotta, even concrete. And they range from tulips, daffodils, uh, mini iris reticulatus or dwarf irises, and many other different types of bulbs, which I figured if we go over some of these basic tips that I've uh, applied in keeping them and growing them, I think we can learn a thing or two. One thing that I've learned about growing bulbs is they require drainage, drainage, and more drainage. What I used here is my basic potting mix, uh, probably a half of it plus a half of perlite or gravel or sand to add further drainage into uh, the planting vessel that I placed them in. Vessels that uh, range between, like I said, a regular size pot, which is you can see on the left side, and a concrete bulb pan. Uh, this is one of those antique ones that I've got more than 10 years ago. And this is the perfect vessel for these dwarf iris reticulata right next to it. It's a terracotta pot with daffodils, little mini uh, daffodils called tete a tete. And you can see that there are some growths coming up from there now from the daffodils. Uh, in the back of it, uh, we have some tulips, basic tulips, and you can see from the tag, it's called Apple Dorn. It's a bloom that has a combination of apricot, yellow, and orange. That would be a good show uh, once they start blooming. Next to the tete a tete in another bulb pan, which happens to be a recycled backyard candle holder, what I did was I froze the actual candle, the wax that's already melted out and used up. This is right now the perfect housing vessel for hyacinths. These hyacinth bulbs don't require that they are fully buried into the ground. We have uh, half of the bulbs just sitting on dirt and to keep them secure, we dress them with pebbles. I have a large collection of pickling crocs and on this planting uh, application to the right of the hyacinths, I put tete a tete which are now blooming. These are tete a tete daffodils have now started blooming and I placed them inside a one and a half uh, gallon crock. Right behind that are my very successful, and I'm very proud of this, they are very easy to propagate from cuttings for Scythias. And at the moment, these all rooted out cuttings are still inside the original perlite that I placed them in for rooting last fall. These have been in the uh, rooting medium for about three months. Behind that are my new climbing roses. I thought I'd show you and give you a little preview uh, of climbing roses that I got from a local grower. But those roses will have a different post uh, regarding that. Again, the tete a tete on the left side of the screen behind that. We also have reticulata and also some Siberian iris uh, that are planted in that clay uh, terracotta pot. Beside that are tulips, more tulips to the one right next to it. And um, yet another uh, combination of um, Siberian and also Dutch uh, tulips and irises in that one terracotta pot. This is a large turquoise pot that contain a bulb lasagna of tulips which are now peeking out um, right on top of the uh, pebbles and below that about six inches below that are uh, daffodils that are also planted in a lasagna planting project. You may remember that I had a video 
I posted a video about Bob Lasagna not too long ago and I will put a link on this on the description box and right on the screen up on the corner of this video. On the other side of the big turquoise spot, right on top of the elevated garden retaining wall, what I have is the other bulb pen, uh, also made up of that terracotta candle uh, holder from last summer. Um, the reason why I use these is they're perfectly shaped and, and the depth is okay for bulbs to grow in. Uh, the leftover wax, I stuck it in the freezer and by putting it in the freezer, the wax will shrink and it makes it easier for them to be removed. Uh, these hyacinth bulbs uh, and a combination of some mini daffodils are uh, the contents of that terracotta pot that I was talking about. Sometimes I also use Tupperware and these are Tupperware that I just use as temporary receptacles. Uh, the Tupperware will now fit after these um, hyacinths have bloomed, they will fit into a silver bowl uh, an antique silver bowl that we have uh, laying around inside the house. And sometimes we use that so that we can display all these flowers and these blooms inside. Hyacinths have very good scents and uh, I'm one who like uh, heady scented flowers and these are good to be placed just inside the living room or just within the waiting area uh, right near the living room of our house. This video I planned on taking for two days and within those two days I know that the weather will turn from a cloudy day where this current segment is being shown to this day where the sun has shone all day which helped triggered all these Dutch irises, the Dutch uh, dwarf irises to bloom and slowly you can see the beautiful vibrant purple and blue flowers with a touch of yellow in the middle uh, just inside the throat of these mini Dutch irises. The entire planting project took a few months to really produce all of these mini blooms that we can see and I'm giving you updates on. Uh, it is a fun project. It gives me a sense of anticipation from fall time uh, up to early spring, late winter. I planted them sometime in October and just they just sat outside in a sheltered spot and away from extreme wet. What these little bulbs hate are cold, really wet and soggy winters and so that's the reason why we had to put loads and loads of perlite and gravel and sand in the planting um, soil in the soil mix that i used i hope you guys enjoyed this video that i put together for you um, this will be a yearly project for me every fall i will make sure that i gather up all the sale items of mini bulbs regular size bulbs and place them in different type of containers so that we can have a full table display and hopefully next year i'd be able to build a table where we will have all these mini pots all lined up almost like a buffet of pots if you will with blooming bulbs right growing inside of them Allow me to leave you with a few other images of these bulbs, these iris reticulata bulbs, uh, as I say goodbye to you guys, and hopefully we can meet each other again on the next video. Again, please subscribe, like, and spread the word about Acorn Hill and all the little things that we do here on the property. For now, this is Louie, and we'll see you back here on my channel, Acorn Hill. Bye-bye for now.